for once. That is rightly so. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Scratching the base of these statues, an incredibly ugly man with bulging red cheeks, backed with pox scars. Hmm, and a scraggly beard. Oh, right, I remember you. Aren't you a companion of mine? He's sweating as if he has a fever, but his breathing, uh, breathing is measured and steady. A slow push of a blacksmith billows. That lit conversion feels strange and unwelcome. <laughs> Next conversion, possibly sparked by his grin, instead of a beer trap. And then out of nowhere, uh, out of nowhere, there's the hint of alchemical fire that fades almost as soon as you identify the smell. Come to pray at the statue. Profession Mark is barely there. The man makes the statement. The statue takes on a reddish cast as if one is holding a torch to it. And then slowly blossoms into waving flames. The man doesn't turn as the statue blossoms into fire. Hmm. The others are welcome, hmm. Hmm. but it's best if just you and I trade words, and your shadows stay quiet. Hands off their weapons, both arcane and steel. It's only hmm. you I want to trade words hmm. with anyway. Don't order me around, man. I am not very happy, and not very much compromising when it comes to that. I swear before the whore that is Margaret, no harm will come to you in her shadow, if that's enough of a promise for you. If not... Well, I mean, uh, apart from the fact that you just called these goddess of war a whore, um... Hmm. The stuff rests easily in his hand. It wasn't there a moment ago. Are you arming yourself? You're not really... making a good point. Well then, examine the statue first. Weaving fire light from the statue gives off no heat. So much so, you wonder if it is some trick of the mind. The ugly man before you doesn't seem to notice it, nor feel it. So the sheen on his brow is still present, as if he's burning up from within. You got some horrible illness on you, buddy. Shannon weaving flames from the statue of Megram cast more light on his features. Man's robes are dirty, stained with goodies and other marks of the road. The hems of his robes, including the sleeves, are burned at the edges, as if he walked a great distance across a fire, reached into the flames with his hands to pull something out. Interesting. But while his hands are thick and closed, they burn and burn or scorch marks. Hmm. What was your gaze on the staff? The staff looks sick, stout, of blackened ash once burned by a terrible fire. Beneath the ash, the lines in the wood bear shapes and patterns. There's a certainty each step was once something far more dangerous, but not now. Hmm. To study it deeper, it shimmers slightly in your eyes, like water catching the light, weaving across the statue. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Whatever power was bled from the staff, it doesn't make it or the wielder any less dangerous. And you look up to see the man watching you studying the staff. As his gaze meets yours, he nods with a humorless smile. Mm. Strange choice of company. Stone seems cold comfort. The man smiles slightly at your words. Then nods, never taking his eyes off you. I could do better, though the road holds little else. His eyes run the length of your frame and he follows it with a sneer. And I know. Way! <laughs> you want to join me, aren't you? The oh. world holds many whores we worship. Respect comes with honest titles. I if the honest you title instinct in exchange for a little copper, or paid for such in countless ways. That is something we all kinda do sometimes. I will have a point of respect comes with honest titles. If the honest title you give is the title of a hoa, ah, question marks. But if I give offense. If words are all that are left to a man, then why, in the <sighs> dear wood of all places, he should have leave to speak them? Ah. Oh. Hmm. Well then, I didn't catch your name. Oh, why well, you want to speak with me? I didn't give it. Come on, Grins. You probably find names as useless as I do. The names that litter this world like debris are hard enough to wrap around the tongue. And what do they matter? Well, he actually makes a somewhat good point because I am rather horrible with names in general, so 
Mm -hmm. Wissen die never thought names to be that much of an importance? It's good man. The skin and the letters mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. What burns within? It's yeah. more important to me. That's one watcher, way to justify your bad memory when it comes to names. Your letters mm -hmm. like awkward crowns. Mm -hmm, Take mm -hmm, pride mm -hmm. in your actions, not where you hail from. Or how your name rolls off whatever liar's tongue coats it now. You make this a lot more complicated. The whole, you know, liking you part. If you need a title to hang on me to match your own watcher, then call me Durance. And as you observe souls, Durance, a man just... that costs me a lot of my endurance just listening to. Her. Hmm. So how do you know I was a watcher? Durance shakes his hand and his hand curls tightly on his stuff. I can see the questions bubbling up. Let's burn them away one by one. Oh, a bit of a focus on fire, my friend. I am a missionary. Mm -hmm. I walk this diseased nation with its <laughs> heathen, its people so careless with the spirits of others and their own, watchers among them. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know you for what you are, and your name doesn't interest me. Names are for honest folk, and you are a crack that shines light from another place. Which kind of means that you just... Uh... Oh, called me a very much not honest folk. Uh, hmm. You know, I mean my problem with the whole concept of lying and liars. I would consider myself somewhat honest. I mean, nobody's one hundred percent honest, mind you. But we're meant to travel together, you and mm. I. Saw you say so, eh? Names. Not your face, but that soul of yours, all tightened up like a huntsman's knot. That sounds horrible. Uh, you saw my soul in the flames. There's things we can teach each other. Mm -hmm. If you're in need of answers to your mantle of questions. Yes, and all I have to do is name, uh, well, is tick uh, this poxmark guy around with me. I don't force my words on anyone other than you. Mm -hmm. I don't care who walks with you or what their mewling problems and politics are. <laughs> There's enough howling in the world without me stoking that fire. I won't take from your provisions, don't need much on the road. I can carry my weight, which is considerable. Are you implying that you're fat or are you implying that you are very much useful there? I mean, I guess as long as you don't need me to feed you, not take care of you. I'm not really against it. Seems like a pretty good deal actually. Like, hey, here, look, I join you, I don't cost anything, and I offer stuff. Many will stand against you. Yeah, just it's in this one already place already. From what I can see, left their marks. Mm -hmm. Like a trail, worming its way behind you. Yeah, you're kind of confused with it. What you see behind me is a trail of corpses I leave behind. But you know, what kind of marks do you see? Disease, just pointing it out. Both hmm? could have touched you, yet here you stand. Oh, you mean that shit? Yeah, yeah. That happened too. Didn't kill me. Disease, I'm a protagonist. All of us were close to and as we all know from but it's no well, years and generations of gaming, it left protagonists have a hard time dying. But like flames, the pox doesn't strike twice, nor is it catching. Hmm. I will kind of disagree. I'm pretty sure the pox can strike twice. That you can actually. Well, if your stone mistress allows it, then come on, I guess. Her? Don't fear her jealousy. Let us see what the road holds, Watcher. Well, I do fear jealousy of gods because, you know, they have a tendency to murder you out of jealousy. Gods can be so bloody. If you can actually le read up about, you know, the uh, Greek mythology. And uh, start with Zeus and go from there, and you will see that jealousy kills people. Also, that gods have as much of a problem keeping their pants on than most humans have. Surprisingly enough. I do like the look of the game. They actually did well with their maps. I'll give them that. <laughs> and seaweed, bright green with feet, royal in a stew, which tastes pleasantly salty. How do you know how it tastes? Did you just walk up to that and go like, hmm, that's true. Take your finger inside and be like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, tastes nice, salty, very good. 
say they're rude, but you know. If any of facing a towering. Let's just call that in half off, please, because I. Aumawa. Aumawa, indeed. I'm never going to call it right. Skin is the warm gold brown of a dying sunset, with pale fish white patches its throat and hands. Baby red brown hair pulled into tight braids around a stripe of bare skin. It follows the curve of her skull, flows down over her broad shoulders. Greetings. That's not what you said. She regards you calmly, evidently unsurprised to find you here at the edge of her camp by the water. If you come for medicines and craft work, so to share the fire. She gestures to the large cold room nearby. Yeah, I kinda tasted your um your stew there. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet stuff, but uh, a bit salty. You know, maybe light on the salt. If yet it's not the most healthy thing. Uh, yes, indeed, you are the woman we were looking for. Huh? For that uh, pregnant woman in Gilded Vale. Ultra sent me here. She said that you know some way to ensure that the child is not a hollow bone, which also would be quite the uh, amazing thing. Ah, more of Lord Roderick's frightened flock. Hmm? Ultra said, speaking of, I imagine she's somewhat desperate sending you out here for her. Uh, she gave you payment, I expect. Um, yeah, she did. Whatever it is, uh, you keep it. I don't need coin. I need you to do something for me instead. Okay. And there's the so ripped shrine to the northeast, hit by one of the priests. And I was exiled from there some time ago, and their scouts will look, uh, still look about this place, waiting for an opportunity to end his life. Hmm. Okay. One day I will have to go for supplies, and I will come back to find my assistant slain. Why don't you take your assistant with you then? Oh, I'll uh, help anyone then. Rip me off this nuisance and I will do what I can for all. Uh, and throw in something for you too. Well, I mean, if you're willing to pay me. Scree! A questioning scree! You see, a long, long time ago when I started playing RPGs like this, I figured that I very much like to roleplay myself as a bit of a mercenary soul, basically. I like to do things for money. It's all this business, you know? People are like, here, I give you money and I will do things. Now, of course, as we all know, some quests are morally questionable, at the very least. I do like to play with that a bit. But I do like to set myself a general tone that I like to follow, you know? Makes me feel also not satisfied. Oops, wrong button. Pulling. Hmm. Right from Full Final's Travels. Uh, I met a helpful driver woman while in Gildeville. She was an invaluable gate during my time in that Surrey village and agreed to come to me some part of the way towards Anslug's compass. But it was otherwise known as Marble's Fork, but I gave her my amulet so that she might remember me fondly. Let's return to these lands someday after all. Interesting. Wasn't he the guy that the... Uh, well, the dead guy in the Trolls' bed he was looking for? Fuse our ribs. Not much of a problem. Yeah, I do think I like my Durance back here as a, you know, bit of a distance fighter. And again, that kind of leads to a problem with the Holy Radiance, doesn't it? Because... Uh, the range is not bad. I suppose. Mm, yeah, probably better idea to knock that down. Mm -hmm. yeah. But she's gonna end up on the list otherwise. Well met, friend. Yes, we did take care of the squawking. I don't think they're gonna squawk much, as you know, as long as they're not getting revived. Scream. <laughs> Newton, I do not mind yours. Well, they're all dead. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to the feeble attempts to surprise us. Yeah, change your three files for your trouble. And now we can get underway with my part of the bargain. Very good. You're keeping your word. 
Uh, but I need one more ingredient. Some spores from the creatures in that cave. They actually points just north of me. Oh, <laughs> Spore next to columns would be useful material. You need one for the mixture. Uh, uh, you know, have some. It was just there. So you do. Excellent. I keep one here and I let it to record one. This should not take long. 20 hours later. Mm, take this off. Tell her to drink before bed as I didn't use a sleep. She would find herself more energetic in the mornings. You will eat more fish and cheese. The potion will sustain a healthy appetite. Grant her strength. She's a frail woman from what I remember of her. Uh, so what is this potion anyway? Uh, okay, yeah, good point. Some dang spores, you know, that much. Uh, and they will bolster the soil in her soul. Give her what energy they once stole. Hmm. You will not cure the legacy. I tell you, not plain. You can tend to ailments of the body, but not afflictions of the soul. Hmm. Certainly not afflicted by the gods. I explained it, but people will believe as they like. That's actually a pretty good point. People will believe whatever they want to believe. Yeah. A little belief. Perhaps this will help. Belief is a powerful thing. In the meantime, the will feel much improved, and if the child should not be claimed by the legacy, it will be born healthy. Hmm. Well, to be fair, you're nothing but a Jonathan, then, aren't you? <laughs> ah, I'm many years now a midwife. Well, I'm not a work of impossible miracles. If you want to do something about the legacy, tell you this. I have to deal with Lord Redrick. It was his punishment which drives this home to me. And makes you good money then, I suppose. Oh. Hmm. I mean, to be fair. I'm here. Mm, she makes a good argument there. Yeah. And I'm not that much of a miserable person that I would then go ahead and do something horrible to her. After all, she hasn't actually, actually lied to me. Now then, I guess we go back to Gilded Veld, give her the stuff, and then we can go to either the Eastern Wood or the Black Meadow. Hmm. Both sound very interesting, although I think the Black Meadow is actually on the road to quite newer. Where we are supposed to go, main quest-wise. Of course, <laughs> if the game tells you, like, here's your main quest, follow it. People tend to go everywhere else first. Because, well, that's just how we, we adventurous types are, you know. We don't like it. Yeah. Hmm. This might also be a good time to look for uh, some uh, Archibus for endurance. Archibus and his sword. Would apparently to be what uh, his most beloved war would... Uh, like to use. Then they told her, that's not the pistol. Ah! You making some horror jokes there, eh, little villager? Well, I guess, I mean, if you're in such an desolate place like this. Good day, stranger. Oh, some time away. Well, he wouldn't return. Is that it? Have you brought it? Uh, yes, I have. Here it is. Okay, I don't know about you. No, maybe we will be safe. Uh, this is actually a pretty damn hard decision. I can let her believe that, yes, but uh, if her child is then born hollow, she's going to hate me for that. Um, no, what? No, let me let me be honest here. You should know something about the potion. Well, uh, might, it will make you feel better, but that's basically it. I got to see the ocean. Wasn't so bad, actually. Uh, you don't know that your child will meet the same fate. Perhaps it's best left to chance. Mm hmm. Yeah, you shouldn't really turn to such matters. Uh, Maybe well another way. I will take the potion, but thank you. All the same. Mm -hmm. Ten copper and a minor cloak of protection. That's better than nothing. Yeah, that's what it always comes down to. Nobody knows what's going to come. Just be 
happy about it. Also, is this village plagued by perpetual rain? Is it just me? Hmm, what do we have here? Toad, madame, but a moment. Old man waits upon the road, clad in a green cloak. Transformer, to meet you as you approach and closer distance, his features are real for those of a young man. The line of weariness. He appears to be favoring his left leg as he walks, and there's a dark stain upon the fabric of his trousers under the knee. He so greets you with a polite bow. Have you done dear or great service? The man nods towards the nearby house. As a compass is a dangerous place, and yet you were willing to venture there to help her. I mean, she was pretty damn straight with me. She's like, here, take some money and go there. And I was like, hmm, sure. Pretty damn reasonable. Gilda will need such courage in these dark times. Stout hearts willing to do what is necessary to save these people. Can I count here among yet number? First things first, who even are you, eh? Many men determined to see Gilda restored to its former glory. I was a tame stranger when Gilda was worthy of its name. Uh, what? Uh, the weed shone like gold on the hills. The village people lived well. I don't know about that golden crops, but there were less flies anyway. <laughs> he makes a good point. And what has become of it now? Um, well, cast a blight upon an ant, it is not the fault of its people. But it looks to punish us for crimes we have not committed, and in turn he is blind to his own. That's usually how lords are, you know. My fiefdom is not doing well. Well, that's everybody's fault, but not mine. Obviously. Come on. It is denied. Calls cleared by the flame. Oh, we heard of you, aren't we? Like many terrans, yes, one of the first strong male women for fear of retribution. So you are what? You have press on the spite that, however, I wonder if you might not help one another. Hmm, it depends. I do not help as a sort of charity. To your sense of justice, perhaps your practical nature will suffice. What it does ask you would improve all our fortunes. Hmm. No longer has Gilded Vale suffered under Vedric's madness. He would cure Waitwin's legacy by ensuring there are none alive in the village be afflicted. It does solve the problem. It's going to destroy his fiefdom, which means he is not going to get any money out of it anymore. You know, kinda stupid. If he is owned by Figurit, may be at risk. The man has no mercy in him. If not so idle, my people and I breach their defenses, intent on ending rid of ourselves. We enter through the sewers under cover of night. If we were routed. There are dark creatures down in the dungeons. Lack of heretics, any man, sir. Uh -huh. Calls to you. Our running has called for further reinforcements, and soon there will be no stopping him. Time grows short, and in this hour I must beg assistance where I care. Okay, well, there was a rubber stream plot planned <laughs> after this. Yes, he does. If we do this, he also quite a bit. I'm thinking for the ramparts, I'll cut his head from his shoulders. I care not. Once I've thrown light, empty Gilded Vale will have the stewardship that it deserves. Which is, of course, your stewardship. I mean, yeah, you know. The reason I can promise you that you it will not go unrewarded is the best disposal of a long raid. Then didn't you may take your fill. Hmm. Hmm, well, I guess I could deal with him. Uh huh. Yeah, the shoulders crawling with soldiers and cell swords. Oh, no, to Redrick. I'm not to Kenty to intrude us. No say we'll be all the more alert for our failed efforts. Rulers will be unwise. But if you would follow our steps and seek out the entrance to the sewers and the eastern edge of the moat. Mm hmm. I don't know if I'm captured. Maybe the entrance has been found and sealed in you. So I'm going to my command, it would be in your depth if you found some means of helping them. Hmm. Once you make it inside, take out my old friend Netma. Is I a priest? Russian? No, that the shining god is fallen. A good man is difficult circumstances. Mm -hmm. Listen to reason. Shining god. I shone so bright, yes, when the bomb took him. <laughs> the monarchy is obsolete now. Ash does not shine. Like if someone was to call you. The attractive priest. <laughs> Netma can help you read Frederick, but he resides in the upper levels of Frederick's hold. Protected by guards and mercenaries. Hmm. To keep the shadows if you mean to reach you without allowing the entire keep. Oh boy. 
Mm -hmm. Just yeah, keep your advice in mind. Spoke with like a tactician. Well, thank you very much. If you would support you, I'm sure you will prove the victor. You will find Redrick's hold to the east, past the east endward. I demand of your success. Uh, yeah, damage reduction. Actually, damage reduction is probably mm, most of what I need. You sense you're being shaken and you open your eyes to see Edward standing over you. Send a sling shoulder. He looks concerned. As I have your vision blurred, uh, the way you need of unremembered nightmares clouding your thoughts. You should have it all during the previous night. Hey! Hey! You're awake? Good. Mm -hmm. You were, uh, were kind of thrashing around, eyes rolled back in your head. Well, that doesn't sound healthy. I'm gonna snap you out of it for a long time now. I was gonna have to get a bucket of cold water. You, uh, you don't seem like you get much rest at night. Hmm. You got those dark circles under your eyes. Oh, well, I guess not lately, you know. The dreams and whispers. Nice to watch Ooh. you think I'm sure it just takes some time to adjust is all. Yeah, seeing stuff that's not really there, you know, that, uh... Better wake up faster next time. I guess that is, you know. I want that bucket of cold water. I mean, if it wakes me up from a nightmare, I might actually want to consider that bucket of cold water. Just don't do it, you know, right in the middle of winter or something. One who likes to fight at a distance. Just of the side of the path into Kate Nua stands an opposing figure. John Fixet. Aumawa. I murder that all the time. Red and one armor appearing up at the outer walls of the keep. In his hand is a small piece of charcoal and it works feverishly at taking notes upon a small grip of paper. And once he has to reach up to rent his colorful cap from falling off his head as he gazes upwards. Well, uh, what are you doing over there? And looks over at you, blinking in surprise. His face splits in a white and very toothy grin. Well, considering your teeth, I imagine so. And she waves the parchment in greeting. Killing time, if I'm honest. I've already walked the perimeter twice. There are names scratched upon some of the bricks just there. Workers and masons, I expect. A little immortality for themselves. Looks up the wall again. Special found. The Fine Keep. Kaitnoir. Two centuries to its name and abandoned for nearly as long. That does not speak for the keep, you know. I'm gonna point that out. You built a keep, which costs a lot of money. As you know, you need wood stone and stuff, and you need masons and architects and stuff. In that sense, for two centuries and is abandoned for just as long. Yeah. Hey, you need yours. But the truly interesting part is in there. Mm -hmm. And I haven't had much luck in reaching the keep itself. I hoped to find the master of this place, mm -hmm. a man by the name of Meerwald. But it seems that he either holds his privacy most dear, or else has been devoured by his house guests. Um, I actually came here looking for him as well, you know. Oh, truly? Then perhaps we can help one another. Mm -hmm. The grounds are infested with all manner of beasts. I've never seen the like. <laughs> I didn't want to risk it alone. But you seem capable. Together, I'm sure we could manage it. And then well, we, we can, can try it. Right? Oh. questions of Meerwald. Let's try it. I seek a great treasure, you see. Mm -hmm. Not gold or silver, but the Talvi Oratoa. Mm -hmm. You might call it the Book of Virtues. Mm, it's that a sounds interesting. Text of the Rauatai, but we possess only a fragment of it. Okay. A year I've journeyed in search of the rest, <laughs> and I uncovered evidence that leads me to believe the original lies just there, beneath the keep. That's interesting. How would it have ended up there? Uh, why would this Tanvi or uh, Toa be here in the dry wood? Precisely, yeah, that's the very question. Oh, at least we agree that uh, that is indeed a question. It's a long and twisting tale, my friend, as all good chance should be. I can tell you more if you wish. In time. Um, well, let's go and meet Merwald then. Excellent. Lead on, my friend, and I will be at your heels. Ah, wait. Speaking of that, I ought to warn you first. Wondrous teeth I nearly mm -hmm. forgot. I have at times been followed. Mm. It began in Adir, and in Exomital they attacked outright. I believe they do not wish for me to find mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. I am looking for. I say believe, 
but I have been told as much by one of my would-be assassins. <laughs> I pay them little mind. Humorless swords and long robes. But it's why I bought the sword, mm -hmm. you see. Mm, she makes and a good point, yeah. it's fair that you should know. Well, uh, you know, what are a few assassins between friends? <laughs> then again, you see very calm about us. Well, it's not as if I'm going to turn around and go home at their urging. <laughs> if their previous efforts are anything to go by, we have very little to worry about. Well, I mean, technically, if he can deal with it alone, you know, then uh, the group should be able to deal with it.